Kitabu cha Zaburi ya 11. Psalms 11 verses 3. Zaburi ya 11 aya 3. Psalms 11 Zaburi 11 verses 3. Aya ya 3. And it is my request that we become because what God has given me this morning to share to us it hopes somebody in this, this is what the Bible says if the foundations are destroyed what can the righteous do a question mark Biblia inauliza ikiwa misingi ikiharibika mwenye haki atafanya nini The word of God is God is speaking to us Neno la Mungu ni Mungu mwenyewe akina nanasi I don't know whether you have had a, a situation where somebody communicates to you and instead of expressing himself he, he just comes to you with a question. Sijui kama umefikia mahali ambapo mtu anataka kuzungumza na wewe na mara afika poko yako anaanza na swali. Father we thank you for your word. Baba tunakushukuru kwa neno lako. We cannot separate you with your word. Hatuwezi kukutenganisha wewe na neno lako. Your word is your mind. Neno lako ni mawazo yako. Your word is our life. Neno lako ni maisha yetu. Father you speak to us this morning. Baba unaponasi asubuhi ya leo. Do good to us. Tutendee mema. Lead us. Tuongoze. Teach us. Tufunze. Direct us tuelekeze us so that we may be into your likeness tufunze ili kwamba tufanane nawe in jesus name kwa jina la yesu where we have read mahali ambapo tumesoma the bible is asking a question biblia inauliza swali if iwapo some other fashions does not start with the if nakala nyingine hazianzi na neno iwapo they start with when zinaanza na lini wakati when the foundations are destroyed wakati misingi inaharibiwa what can the righteous do mwenye haki atafanya nini three things have been brought into our attention mambo matatu hapa yanatuelekeza one moja there are people under the sun kuna watu chini ya jua called righteous wanaoitwa wenye haki and the writer of where we have read na masehemu ya maandiko ambayo tumesoma it is speaking to these people inazungumzia hawa watu the bible is very categorical biblia inasema wazi it is not speaking to the kings haizungumzi na wafalme it is not speaking to drunkards wala haizungumzi walevi it is not speaking to the rich men of this world wala haizungumzi matajiri wa ulimwengu it is not speaking to the learned elites wala haizungumzi na waliosoma it is very categorical inasema wazi it is being directed to the people the bible is calling them righteous inaelekezwa kwa watu ambao biblia inawaita wenye haki and this is being what what the bible is putting across na kila ambacho biblia inaeleza ya to this people who are called righteous kwa hao watu wanaoitwa wenye haki why are they called righteous kwa nini wanaitwa wenye haki one moja they are being called righteous because of whom they believe wanaitwa wenye haki kwa sababu ya yule wanayemwamini Remember that it is not by our righteousness. It is not by our works. Our righteousness is bestowed in whom we believe. That is our Christ Jesus. When we believed in this Jesus. By the virtue of believing in him. We were made tulihesabiwa wenye haki so the bible is speaking to us hivi biblia inazungumza na sisi to me and you kwangu mimi na wewe pia we who confess salvation ambao una ukiri wokovu we whom we have forsaken sin ambao umesaliwa mara ya we who forsaken the the, the, the patterns of the world and Sist- invited jesus sisi ambao tuliacha mambo ya ulimwengu na tukampokea yesu maishani mwetu so the bible is speaking to us hivi biblia inazungumza nasi The Bible is speaking of three things. Biblia inazungumza kuhusu mambo matatu. So that pass. Toka sehemu hiyo. There are people on earth called righteous. Kuna watu katika ulimwengu waitwao wenye haki. That in these people whom the Bible is calling 
them gracious. There is something in their life called foundation. Something that you cannot forego. So in each and every life of a believer, a Christian, a, a spirit filled person, a Bible believing person, a person who lives in godly way, there is something in their life the Bible is calling it foundation. Another thing which is which is being brought into our attention. These foundations in the lives of a believer. There are possibilities that they can be destroyed. That's the Bible. God cannot contradict himself. When we read the Bible. The Bible is the mind of God. And the Bible is speaks things which are spiritual. And uh, at any time when the Bible may use physical things, things that we may see with our naked eyes, it drives it to spiritual things. So the Bible says, it's a question. It is asking me and you. The foundations are destroyed. The Bible acknowledges their foundations. What can a Christian do? What can a brother and a sister in the church do? Meaning what? When the foundations are destroyed, something needs to be done. In the book of Corinthians, You know, God cannot contradict himself. He cannot say this today. Then tomorrow, he says something which is very different from what he said yesterday. God cannot say that there are foundations which have been destroyed. Then he contradict himself. He later says, there is nothing like that. The, the book of 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, starting from verse 17 to 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Are we there? Are Second Corinthian, chapter 5, starting from verse 17. We only read two, 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 two scriptures. That is 17 and 18. God cannot contradict himself. This is what the Bible says. It is in the book of Corinthian. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, anyone, not you all, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All the things have passed away. Behold, Tazama. all things have become new. The Bible says, all. I want us to go together. All, All things. things. Uh, 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 please stick there. Because you have not read 18. Mm. Many a times I have said that God cannot contradict himself. People have read this. And they have continued suffering in Christianity, believing in Jesus, spirit filled, they have forsaken sin, 
but they are struggling in their lives. Watu wamesoma andiko hili na wanaendelea kuteseka wanamwamini Yesu wamejazwa na roho wanaamini Biblia lakini maisha yao ya ngaliduni. They have forsaken the worldly life. Wameacha maisha ya ulimwengu. They have believed in Jesus Christ. Wamemwamini Yesu Kristo. They have come to church. Wengi wamekuja kanisani. They are smart. Wako nidhamu. The way they do their things. Kisha wanafanya mambo yao. They are smart. Wako safi. But they are suffering. Lakini bado wangali wanateseka. In the house of God. Katika nyumba ya Mungu. Therefore if anyone is in Christ. Kwa hivyo mtu yeyote akiwa ndani ya Kristo. He is a new creation. Yeye ni kiumbe kipya. All the things are past. Ya kale yamepita. Behold all things are become new. Mambo yote yamekuwa mapya. Waje kwanza tutaenda itini. Waje kwanza tukuhamie pale. Paul says. Paul asema In the in the book of 1 Corinthians 13. This is Paul. We will still go back to Corinthians 2 Corinthians 5. But first Corinthians 13. 11. Media people just be a bit quicker please. Wanamedia tafadhali mfanye kwa haraka wa Korintho wa kwanza 13 mstari wa 11. First Corinthian not second Corinthian. Wa Korintho wa kwanza 13. Thank you. Nisaidie na hiyo maji sababu umekuja. Eh. Hata wazee utumwa. Ndio. Kutusiwa ndio watu si yangu. <laughs> Amen. Amina. This is Paul speaking. Huyu ni Paul anazungumza. Paul is saying this. Paul anasema hivi, when I was a child. Nilipokuwa mtoto mchanga. And remember the Bible speaks about the spiritual things. Nakumbuka Biblia inazungumzia mambo ya kiroho. When I was a child. Nilipokuwa mtoto mchanga. I spoke as a child. Nilinena kama mtoto. I understood as a child. Nilielewa kama mtoto. I thought as a child. Nilifahamu nilifikiri kama mtoto. But when I became a man, tokea hapo nilipokuwa mtu mzima, I would have away childish things. Nikayabatilisha mambo ya kitoto. Paul said when I became a man, Paul anasema nilipofanyika mtu mzima, it is not that he was a, he was he was a lady. Sio kwamba alikuwa msichana. Mama. It is he is not speaking about the gender. Hazungumzi kuhusu jinsia. That When, when, when he was a lady, kwamba alipokuwa msichana, now he has become a man. Sasa amefanyika mwanamume. Paul I say when I was a child Paul anasema nilipokuwa mtoto the bible speaks about things which are spiritual Biblia inazungumzia mambo ambayo ni ya kiroho When Paul is speaking when I was a child Paul anaposema nilipokuwa mtoto Paul is speaking about being a child in matters of spirituality Paul anazungumza kuhusu kuwa mtoto katika mambo ya kiroho Things and understanding about things of God Elewa zaidi mambo kuhusu Mungu Paul is saying when I was a child Paul asema nilipokuwa mtoto nilifikiri kama mtoto This is Paul. Huyu ni Paulo. At some point this is Paul who is speaking. Kwa wakati mmoja Paulo huyu anayezungumza, he was a persecutor of brethren. Alikuwa anawashtaki wapendwa. He used to speak evil against brethren. Alikuwa anazungumza kinyume na wapendwa. Being against brethren is childishness. Kuwa kinyume na watakatifu ni utoto. He used to hate brethren. Alikuwa anawachukia wapendwa. People who are called by God. Watu ambao wameitanishwa na Mungu. Hating brethren is childish. Kuwachukia wapendwa ni ukinafsi. I want you to go with me. Nataka uende nami. Doing things against the brethren against the people who are called by God's name. Kufanya mambo kinyume na wapendwa wanaoitanishwa na jina la Mungu. Childish. Ni utoto. When Paul was persecuting the church. Paul alipokuwa analidhi haki kanisa. Paul was doing things which are childish. Paul alikuwa akifanya mambo ya kitoto. That's why Paul is saying when I was a child. Ndio maana Paul asema nilipokuwa mtoto. I thought like a child. Nilifikiri kama mtoto. I was brought up from the village. Nilelewa kule mashambani. When I was a young boy, nilipokuwa kijana mdogo nikikua, I thought all the people under the sun. Nilidhani watu wote chini ya jua are cambas. Ni wakamba wote because that's the language I could hear. Kwa sababu hiyo ndiyo mazingira ambayo nilielewa kwa. When I was young. Nilipokuwa mtoto. When I was young, 
in school. Shuleni, my teacher used to, 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 to write number three. Wangu and my teacher couldn't tell me, copy that number. Na wangu ingi number number when my teacher used to tell me to copy that number, wangu I could write it in the opposite way. Instead of number three, I write it this way. Because that's what I used to see it like. My teacher could write number seven. When my teacher tells me to copy that number, I could write it in the opposite way. Being a child, looking things in the childish way. My teacher could write number nine. When my teacher tells me to rewrite number nine, I could write it like a P. And to me it was okay. Because that's the way I used to see it. One time my mother told me when I was a young boy, let us travel to the city and visit your dad. My dad was living here in these houses of city council. In those days, Nairobi was beautiful. These, these, these houses you see here, the people who used to live in them, in those days, they were being it was honorable people. And it was not the way it is. All the streets had tarmac. In this estate. This Every street. When you leave tarmac, there were good slabs leading to your so my mother took me to come and visit our dad. Being a young boy. Seeing things in the childish way. As we were traveling coming to Nairobi. In that vehicle. I wanted to sit next to the window. Because I used to take out what I had eaten. When we are traveling in a, in a vehicle. So I used to sit in. When that time comes for me to take out what I have eaten. I don't do it inside the car. I do it outside. So I could see things in the childish way. When I look outside. As we are traveling. I could see trees running faster, faster, faster. To me trees we are running. I, I could look outside and see trees overtaking one another. Little did I know it is, there are not trees learning. It is our car. Seeing things in the childish way. Paul is saying, when I was a child, Paul is not speaking about age number. Paul is speaking about the things pertaining spirituality. When I was a child, I used to see things in the childish way. Back from where we have read. Second Corinthians chapter 5. 17. We have read 17. Let us start from 17. Let us Therefore, this is the same Paul. Paul who says when I was a child, when I used to do childish things, when I used to hate brethren, when I could speak evil against them who are in Christ, them who have been made righteous, the chosen one, the royal priesthood, people who are called by God's name, Paul is saying when I was a child now it's the same Paul who is saying Therefore, if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation hard things have passed away behold hard things have become new this scripture 
has meant so many of us Limefanya wengi wetu not to live our lives to see shima isha yetu and I have said that God cannot contradict himself. Any time you say, you know, when I am in Christ, I am in Christ. The former things have passed. Everything has passed away. I am a new creature. God of us is 18. Second Corinthians 5, give us 18. Wa Corinthians wa pili tano, tupe mstari wa kumina nane. Now, all things are of God. Lakini mambo yote pia ya natoka kwa mungu. 17, imesema, all things have become new. Kumina saba, imesema, mambo yote mifanyika mambo. 18. Kumina nane. When we quote 17, we neglect 18. Tunasoma kumina saba, tunasahau kumina nane. All things are of God. Everything God owns, everything on earth. That we see. Even that we don't see with our naked eyes. They belong to him. Who has reconciled us to himself. Through Christ Jesus. Where are you taking it away? Oh, now all things are of God. Sasa vitu vyote ni vya Mungu. Who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Aliyetupatanisha sisi na nafsi yake kupitia Yesu Kristo. And na has given us ametupa sisi the ministry huduma has given us ametupa sisi has given me and you amenipa mimi na wewe the ministry of reconciliation. Uduma ya upatanisho. Look here. Angalia hapa. Jesus has reconciled us. Yesu ametupatanisha sisi. To the Father. Na Baba. The same same Father. Huyo huyo Baba. After Jesus has reconciled us to the Father. Baada ya Yesu kutupatanisha sisi na Baba. Has given us. Ametupa sisi. We who are called by his name. Sisi tunayuko kwa jina lake. We who are born again. Sisi tuliokoka. Who are racious. Ambao ni wenye haki. Who our foundations has been halted. Ambao misingi yetu imeharibiwa. God has given us. Mungu ametupa sisi. God has given me. Mungu ametupa mimi na wewe. A ministry. Huduma. And this ministry is called a ministry of reconciliation. Na huduma hii na ito huduma ya upatanisho. What is reconciliation? Upatanisho ni kitu gani? Reconciliation is bringing back Upatanisho ni kurejesha to normal Kwa kahali ya kawaida When people differ Watu wanapoko sana They become an emit Wanakuwa maadui When they sit down Wanapo ketichini To sort out their difference Kusuluisha shida zao That's reconciliation Huo ni upatanisho They are reconciling to one another. Wanapatana moja kwa mwenzaki. Why? Kwa nini? Because they need things to be at normal. Kwa sababu wanataka mambo irejeleka. If they used to do business together. Kama walikuwa wanabiyashara pa moja. And because of them differing. Na kwa sababu yao kutofautiana. Because of them fooling to different directions. Kwa sababu yao kila mtu kubuta upande wake. They went apart. Wakaenda kila moja jia yake. Now. Sasa. Bible says, Bible inasema, after Jesus reconciled us to our Father, the same, same Father has given, given unto us, we Christians, the ministry of reconciliation. The book of John 19, verses 28. I want to quote those verses which which has made us remain the way we are. We are in church. We are Christians, but we are suffering. We are struggling. Property is following us. To we are, are not different. We are not different from the unborn again. There are even the, the unborn again who are living better lives than us. After this, are living better lives than us. Kuna hata wali okoka wanaishi maisha bora kutuliko. Bada ya haya. Jesus knowing that all things were now 
accomplished by the scripture may be fulfilled said I thus now Jesus knowing now the scripture has been fulfilled give us the next verse now a vessel full of sour wine was, was sitting there and they filled a sponge with the sour wine put it on Ipsop and put it to his mouth kulikuweko huko chombo kimeja asiki basi wakati ya sifongo ilioja asiki juu ya mfito wa hisopo wakampelekea kinywani give us that tupe aya 30 well now i want i, I, I want us to look at it so mm. when jesus had received the sour wine basi yesu alipokwisha kuipokea ile siki he said alisema it is finished imekwisha it is finished. Imekwisha. At bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Akainama kichwa chake akaisalimu roho yake. Scriptures which we quote as Christians. Haya maandiko tunayotamka kama wa Kristo. God cannot contradict himself. Mungu hawezi kujichanganya na wewe. When he says that there are foundations in our life. Kuna misingi iliyo maisha ni mwetu. Which has been destroyed. Ambayo imeharibiwa. When Jesus came on earth. Jesus was there even before the creation. In fact, he is, he is the creator. When Jesus came on earth, Jesus came on earth on a mission. To reconcile us. After man and God went apart. By man being disobedient. By man not obeying God. When this happened. Jesus came. On one mission. To reconcile man to God. Man. In the area of spirituality. So when Jesus came, he found no journey was on the cross to redeem man, to take man back to God. After man was separated from God through sin. So what Jesus is saying on the cross, it is finished. It is his mission. Of redeeming man. man of the mission of saving man. The mission of bringing man back to God. The mission of reconciling. The mission of bringing that friendship. God. The mission of bringing that relationship back into norm. So Jesus said, My mission is over. That's why the Bible says, To them whom believed in him, he gave them power for you to have that reconciliation process. You have to believe in Jesus. Besides Jesus, Kando na Yesu. No salvation. Hakuna wakofu. So when you quote this first, that it is finished. At your foundations which were halted have been put right. Jesus was on a mission of salvation. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, sura ya kwanza, verses 26. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26. Then God said, I'll be king and see how the foundations of men were destroyed. Then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness. This is God speaking. Let them have dominion over the fish. 
when god created man mungu alipomuumba mwanadamu man was created in god's image and likeness mwanadamu aliumbwa kwa sura na kwa mfano wake mungu going to the book of genesis chapter 5 naenda kitabu cha mwanzo this is the, this is the first intention of god creating this was the formula this was the plan but let us make man a person who looks like us image and likeness in chapter 5 jesus changes the 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 the, the, the entire formula now Yesu akaja karejesha formula yote. Everything is turned around. Kila kitu kikaanza upya. Genesis chapter 5 verse 3. Sura ya 5 ya mwanzo mstari wa 3. It was God's mind for man to be to have his image and likeness. Ilikuwa ni mpango wa Mungu mwanadamu kufanana na Mungu. man sinned. Wakati mwanadamu alipotenda dhambi. This is what happened. Hiki nicho kilichofanyika. And Adam lived 100 This is chapter 5. Ni sura ya 5. Chapter 5 you are past chapter 3 and chapter 4. Ni sura ya 5 umepita sura ya 3. This is about the fall of man. Ambaye inazungumza kuhusu kuanguka kwa mwanadamu. How men fall. Jinsi mwanadamu alivyoanguka. So in chapter 5 verse 3 This comes after the fall of man. Man being disobedient to God. Man disobeying God. Chapter 5 verse 3. This is the same God speaking. Who said from chapter 1 that we will make man after whom image of the whom our own like. In chapter 5. In chapter 5 he changes everything. God says. Adam lived 130 years. Adam akaishi And begot a son. In his own kwa sura ya not God. Sasa si sura ya Mungu. His own sura yake. God transferred it from being divine. Mungu akambadilisha kutokana na utaua to human. Kwa mwanadamu. So Adam begot his son after his own. Kwa hivyo Adam akamzaa mwana kwa sura yake. Image. Sura yake mwenyewe. And likeness. Na mfano wake. After sinning. Baada ya kutenda. Foundations have changed. Misingi kabadilika. Foundation from being having the image of God. Misingi ya kuwa na mfano wa Mungu. Having the likeness of God. Kutokana na kuwa na sura ya Mungu. Now it is transferred to man. Sasa imebadilishwa ikageuzwa kwa mwanadamu. The foundations have been destroyed. Misingi imeharibiwa. That is the beginning of everything. Huo ndio mwanzo wa kila kitu. So when the foundations had destroyed. Ivi misingi ilipoharibiwa. What will the righteous do? Nini mwenye haki atakachofanya? In the book of Isaiah, katika kitabu cha Isaya 51:51. The Bible speaks about things which are spiritual. Biblia inazungumzia mambo yaliyo ya kiroho. Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51:51. Listen to me. Hebu nisikilize. You who follow after righteousness. Ninyi mnaotafuta haki. You. Ninyi. Who follow after righteousness. Mnaoitafuta mnaofuata haki. The Bible is speaking to you and me. Biblia inazungumzia wewe na mimi. The Bible is speaking to us. Biblia inazungumza nasi. Not drunkards. Sio walevi. Not witchcraft. Sio wachawi. The Bible is saying. Biblia inasema. Listen to me. You who follow after righteousness. Ninyi mnaoifuatia haki. You who seek the Lord. Ninyi mnaomtafuta Bwana. You Ninyi. Look to the rock from U- which you were. Uangalie ni mwamba ule ambao mlitolewa. Chunguseni ule mwamba mliochongwa kutoka. Mm, ule mwamba mliochongwa kutoka kwao. Kwa hivyo sisi kunao mwamba ambao tulichongwa kutoka. Mm-hmm. Biblia inasema hivi. Mm. Take it back there. From ujitu wewe and to the hall of the feet from which you were dug na tundu la shimo mba what is the bible telling us hiyo ni biblia inatuambia look at your foundation angalia msingi wako we never choose where to be born 
atukuchagua mahali ambapo tutazaliwa we never choose whom to be born to atukuchagua tutazaliwa na nani we just find ourselves tulijipata tu tumezaliwa then after we we, are, we we find ourselves being born kisha baada ya sisi kujipata tumezaliwa we have our work to do tuna kazi ya kufanya the life that we live maisha tunayoishi life is spiritual maisha ni ya kiroho in the life of every human being katika maisha ya kila mwanadamu there is a commanding power behind kuna nguvu zina everyone look at outside look kila mmoja angalia upande ule what do you see do you see a big tree je unaona mti mkubwa kule nje haya look at me haya angalia ni mchungaji that's a tree huo ni mti in the bible katika biblia anything which the bible mentions kitu chochote ambacho biblia inakitaja when the bible speaks about a donkey anywhere biblia inapozungumza popote pale kushinda au mti or a pig au nguruwe it is not just there haiko pale tu the bible speaks about things which are spiritual biblia inazungumza mambo yaliyo ya kiroho it is upon you ni juu yako wewe an animal like a donkey is not mentioned one one's not twice mjama kama punda hajatajwa mara moja jesus used a donkey alitumia punda tu balaam used a donkey balaam alitumia punda and donkey spoke punda kanena it is an animal which the bible records that an animal spoke ni mnyama ambaye biblia inana kilikomba mnyama huyu alizunguka samson used a jaw of a donkey samson alitumia mfupo wa punda what is so special with the donkey ni nini hapa specially kuhusu punda it is upon us ni juu yetu sisi the bible uses several not once concerning trees biblia inazungumza mara kadhaa si moja kuhusu mti in the book of job katika kitabu cha ayubu the bible says biblia sema there is hope kuna lotumaini for a tree kwa mti which has been cut uliokatwa to spring again ili uchipuke tena there is hope kuna lotumaini for a tree wakati mti why a tree mti kwa nini mti a tree has two parts mti unazo sehemu mbili We are supposed to be like a tree. Tunastahili sisi kuwa kama miti. A tree has two parts, mm-hmm. two mm-hmm. portions. Mti unazo sehemu mbili. There is that which you can see. Kuna ile ambayo unaweza kuona. There is another down which you cannot see. Kuna nyingine kule chini ardhini ambayo huwezi kuona. The one that you see ile unayoiona depends upon that which is you cannot see. Inategemea juu ya kile ambacho wewe huwezi kukiona. The one which is unseen kile ambacho kiona hakionekani. The seen. Kinaamuru mti huo. I come from an area where we, we, we grow mango trees. Natoka katika maeneo ambayo sisi hukuza maembe. Like now if you visit our area mangoes are in plenty. Kama sasa ukitembea kwetu nyumbani maembe ni mengi. You can see a mango tree unaweza kuona mti wa maembe carrying mangoes which are worth a ton ukibaba maembe ambayo ni tani moja mti mmoja one tree carrying a ton mti even mmoja. others carry over a ton mti mmoja na mwingine hata inabeba zaidi ya tani moja when you see it carrying that weight unapoona ukibeba uzito huo wote it is been commanded by the unseen inaamriwa na kila usichokiona thus how our life is structured hivyo ndivyo maisha yetu yalivyo we have the life which is seen tunayo maisha ambayo yanaonekana this one the body you can see huu ni mwili ambao unaweza kuona but there is another unseen life lakini kuna maisha mengine yasiyoonekana the unseen life commands the seen maisha yasiyoonekana yanatawala yanayoonekana the unseen can either be godly yasiyoonekana yanaweza aidha kuwa mungu it can also be evil inaweza kuwa pia ni mwovu when you want this tree unapoona ule mti when you want this tree to give good yield unapotaka mti ule utoe mazao mazuri you feed the unseen unalisha kisichoonekana where i come from mahali nakotoka we had manure to plants tunayo mbolea this manure we don't hand to the to the seen mbolea hii hatuiongezi kwa mti kule juu we feed the unseen tunalisha kisichoonekana because when we feed the unseen maana tulishapo kisichoonekana the unseen will feed the seen kisichoonekana kitalisha kinachoonekana na kitoe mazao that should be our life haya yanapaswa kuwa maisha yetu that is our life haya ni maisha yetu 
when wind comes or storm comes when in the times when the wind is so tough when the wind is it is windy you will find these trees being swelled left and the right but it cannot fall why because it is been held by the unseen this causes us to strengthen the unseen brethren brethren as we enter into the month of prayer it is a season now to manua the unseen the unseen commands the seen the unseen feeds that which is physical so the bible says there is hope when a tree is cut wakati mtu umekatwa when the scene is cut wakati mtu umekatwa it will come a time itafikia wakati people will interfere with what is seen watu wataharibu kile ambacho kinaonekana when people interfere with what is seen watu wanapoingilia kinachoonekana you will depend upon the unseen itategemea kisichoonekana because it is the unseen which commands the visible maana ni kisichoonekana kinachoamrisha kinachoonekana so it is so important we make that which is not seen strong kwa hivyo ni jambo la muhimu kuboresha kile ambacho hakionekani a time will come wakati tutafika when people people will forsake you amba watu watakuwa acha when people will undermine you amba watu watakudunisha but it will depend on how strong you are in the unseen lakini tutategemea jinsi ulivyo na nguvu kwa kisichoonekana when the foundations had misingi inapoharibiwa from genesis now god tokea mwanzo sasa mungu changes the formality anabadilisha mtindo changes now the norm anabadilisha ukawaida now man is being told sasa mwanadamu anaambiwa it is not no longer now in my image sasa sio tena katika umbo langu it will not continue in my likeness haitaendelea katika sura yangu but yours lakini sura yako because you have made that choice kwa sababu umefanya huo uamuzi foundation misingi that been destroyed imeharibiwa in the book of ezekiel katika kitabu cha ezekiel Ezekiel 16 Ezekiel 16 Ezekiel 16 Ezekiel 16 Let us start from verse 3 Tusome tokea aya 3 Ezekiel 16 Ezekiel 16 Ezekiel 16 Ezekiel 16 aya 3 And say that uh, and say Thus says the Lord. Na useme Bwana Mungu asema hivi. This is God is sending Ezekiel. Huyu ni Mungu anapomtuma Ezekiel. Na useme Thus says the Lord. Bwana Mungu asema Go to Jerusalem. Auambia Yerusalemu. Your birth and your nativity are from the land of Canaan. Asili yako na kuzaliwa kwako kutoka katika nchi ya Canaan. Your originality uasili wako where you come from mahali unakotoka where you were born mahali ulipozaliwa your father was a nemorite baba yako alikuwa muamori and your mother a hitite na mama yako alikuwa mhiti continue endelea mstari wa 4 as for your nativity na katika habari za kuzaliwa kwako on the day you were born siku ile uliozaliwa Foundations been altered. Foundations been interfered with. On the day you were born, you never cord was not cut. It is known for a baby when a baby is born. For the umbilical cord to be cut. Kitobu kiweze kukatwa. But here the Bible says the day you were born the norm was not done kitabu chako hakikukatwa your life was corrupt maisha yako yaliharibiwa your life was corrupted right from the birth maisha yako yaliharibiwa tokea kuzaliwa from the day you were born foundation was interfered with everything pertaining your life was changed take us back into the book of Ezekiel 
When the foundations are destroyed. Your navel cord was not cut. Now were you washed into water to cleanse you. You were not rubbed with the sword. No rubbed in saddling clothes. Continue. Nor I pitied you. Hapana jicho nilo kuhurumia to do any of these things for you ili kukutendea neno lolote kati ya mambo hayo kwa compassion on you kwa kukuhurumia but you were thrown out into the open field lakini ulitupwa nje uandani when you yourself was loot on the day you were born kwa kuwa nafsi yako ilichukiwa katika siku ile uliyozaliwa things in our life don't just happen mambo maisha ni mwetu hayafanyiki tu vipi hivi there are powers which cause things into our lives kuna zonguvu zinazoongoza maisha yetu ya kiroho things in our lives don't just happen mambo maisha ni mwetu hayafanyaki vivi hivi tu they are commanding center kunazo kuna utawala unaoongoza there is a commanding power kunacho kitu kinachotuongoza that command dictate our life ambacho kinaongoza na kutawala maisha yetu men of us wengi wetu the life that we live maisha tunayoyaishi it is not our life sio maisha yetu it is the life which has been dictated ni maisha ambayo yameongozwa vibaya it is the life which has been commanded ni maisha ambayo yameamriwa the bible says from the day you were born biblia inasema tokea siku uliyozaliwa things were corrupted mambo yaliharibiwa I said that we never choose. Nasema kama hatukuchagua kama. We did not choose where to be born and Hatu, home to be born. Hatukuchagua tutazaliwa wapi wala tutazaliwa na nani. There are some of us. Kunao baadhi yetu. Whom our fathers or our mothers were witches. Ambao baba zetu au mama zetu walikuwa wachawi. The Bible Isaiah said. Isaiah anasema get to know from the rock which you were crafted. Jua kutoka mwamba ambao kwao ulichongwa. It is so important. Ni jambo la muhimu. We born again. Sisi tuliokoka mara ya pili. To know our family history. Kujua mambo yetu ya kimsingi ya familia zetu. Because our family history will determine whom we will be in. Maana historia ya familia zetu itategemea tutakuwa kina nani siku za usoni. I know you are born again. Najua umezaliwa mara ya pili. If you were born by a witch. Kama ulikuwa umezaliwa na mchawi. You may not be a witch. Uenda usiwe mchawi wewe. It is good that you are born again. Ni vema kwamba umeokoka. But you and that witch. Ni wewe na mchawi huyo. You were crafted from that witch. Ulichongwa kutoka kwa huyo mchawi. You and that witch. Wewe na mchawi huyo. You are one. Ninyi ni kitu kimoja. That's what the Bible is telling us. Hivyo ndivyo Biblia inavyotuambia. Jua wewe ulichongwa kwa mwamba gani? Ulichongwa kutoka wapi? Because from where you came from. Maana tokea mahali ulipotokea. Your originality. Kutoka kwa asili yako. God gave us power. Mungu alitupa uwezo. God gave us ministry. Mungu alitupa huduma. Of reconciliation. Ya upatanisho. The ministry of bringing things back to norm. Huduma ya kurejesha mambo kuwa kawaida. After they were corrupted right from the birth. Baada ya kuharibiwa tokea siku ya kuzaliwa. God gave us a ministry. Mungu akatupa huduma. A ministry of putting things in order. Huduma ya kurekebisha mambo yanayosawa. A ya ministry of putting things how they are supposed to be. Huduma ya kuweka mambo sawa jinsi yanavyopaswa kuwa. Mm. So it is not finished. Kwa hivyo sio bure haijamalizika bado. If it was finished, kama ingelimalizika, then why should God give us that the ministry of reconciliation? Basi kwa nini Mungu atupe sisi huduma ya reconciliation and it was finished? Kwa nini tupatanishwe na kilikwisha yote? Why should God give us the ministry of reconciliation? Kwa nini yet kwa nini Mungu atupe huduma ya upatanisho ili hali when we are in Christ Jesus tunapokuwa ndani ya Kristo Yesu all things are new mambo yote ni mapya the whole has gone ya kale yamepita the word which has gone is you have been forgiven of your sins ya kale ambayo yamepita ni wewe kusamehewa dhambi zako that's the word huyu hayo ndio ya kale paul is saying paulo anasema Paul at some times looked at his spiritual son Timothy. Paulo wakati mmoja alimtazama mwanae wa kiroho Timotheo. A born again. Aliyekuwa mwana. Paul looked at Timothy. Paulo akamtazama Timotheo. As they were doing ministry. Walipokuwa wakifanya huduma. In the book of 2 Timothy. Katika kitabu cha Timotheo wa pili. Chapter 1. Sura ya kwanza. Timothy the servant of God. 
and Paul a servant of God it is Paul who meant that Timothy <clears throat> and sometimes Paul looked at Timothy and this is what Paul tells, tells Timothy the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5 chapter 1 verse 5 when I call to remembrance the, the genuine faith that is in you. This is Paul speaking to Timothy. Paul is addressing Timothy. Paul is, point, is pointing his finger at Timothy. Paul is telling Timothy. Timothy, when I call to remembrance the faith, the, the genuine faith in you, is the faith which is in you. Don't take it away. We are still there. Paul speaks to Timothy. After Paul has walked with Timothy, Paul looks at Timothy. And Paul tells Timothy, this faith which is in you, which it dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, this faith I can see in you, it was in your grandmother Lois. Lois. And your mother Eunice, it was in your grandmother. It came to your mother. And it is now in you. Transfer. That's, what I'm, that, that's why I'm saying. Where mahali tulipo chongwa. Mahali tulitolewa. It will speak volumes in our lives. It has ungumusakundani maisha yako. We as believers, we as born again Christians, if the faith in Timothy, this faith that I can see in you, this same, same faith was in your mother Lois. You inherited it it is now in you. There are also possibilities that the same same faith Timothy you are carrying you will pass it into your generation. When the foundations are tempered with. Our lives so our foundations can be tempered with either positively or negatively. Oh, time is over. Uh, this message I cannot finish. Because I want us, I, I, I want us to understand ourselves. I want us to be delivered from our foundations, from the rocks which we were crafted from. I want us to take our position. And because there is always next time, I will continue with this message. And as we finish, we will do two things. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Bringing things back to normal. Bringing things the way they are supposed to be. That's why the Bible says, Jesus, when he was speaking, Jesus said, You will declare uh, 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 what, we, what you bind here on earth. It will be bound. We will have time to bind. We will have time to dismantle every wrong foundations in our life. It is not normal for us to live the life we are living. When next time comes, I will give you Biblical examples of the people whom the 
foundations were destroyed. And what they did. So I've said we would do two things. One, we will reconcile. We would do reconciliation. That is, we would dismantle. We will destroy. We will disconnect. We will bind and the second thing that we would do and we would do this because it was done in the book of Genesis when the wickedness of men went before the eyes of God. And God decided that he will wipe everything on earth. And it happened. God brought down rain. Waters were coming from up and down. If you read about that flood, Kuna maji vizima za chini Mungu alitoboa vizima za maji. Eh, maji ikawa inatoka chini. Eh, Ingine inatoka juu. Inatoka juu. Because of the, the, the wrath of God. Kwa sababu ya ghadhabu yake Mungu. Because God aid Mungu alikuwa ame 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 gadhafika baka akajuta. Even God was grieved. Hata Mungu akaugua akaugua. Why great man? Kwamba alimuumba mwanadamu. And God decided to destroy the whole world. When, when, when the, 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 the rains were over, this is what Noah did. God, Noah took a sacrifice. Immediately after the rains were over, because no one wanted to overturn what God had declared. Noah gave God a sacrifice. And that sacrifice, the Bible says, before God, it was it was a sweet aroma. It was, it was smelling, smelling so good. And when God smelled that good smell, that good aroma, God changed his mind. And God said, I will never do it again. So the day I will be finishing this message, we will do two things. We will declare. Because in the book of Job, the Bible tells us that we will declare a thing and it shall be established. We will stand here, we will stand here and bring things in order. Secondly, we will call a sacrifice. A sacrifice speaks. When God, when no gave a sacrifice to God, that no, is, no, no, no never spoke anything. No, but that is sacrifice which no gave. It spoke before God. So on that day, I will inform you. Prayer. To tell you, I will tell you this Sunday. I will be finishing my message. So come carrying a good sacrifice. A sacrifice which will bring things back to norm. And I rest my case. Welcome. Hallelujah. Pigia pastor wetu makofi. Asante sana.